Hello everyone. So all the guests who have been around. So I'm Dr. Satish Raman from uh, University of Tartu. I'm working as a senior researcher here. Uh, so today we would like to demonstrate this uh, RoboMD system. So this is an uh, European Commission like uh, Interreg 4C project. Okay. Uh, innovation for welfare project. Uh, and uh, today we will be demonstrating this system for the first time. Uh, we have integrated all the sub modules, and then, like for the first time, like we'll be demonstrating the system anywhere in the world. Hopefully, it is interesting. So we have a home care robot system. So basically, like uh, we have several sensors which can be attached to elderly patients. So basically, to monitor uh, uh, certain uh, conditions. Say, for example, these sensors can detect uh, a person has fallen down or like. Uh, his pulse rate is not normal, his blood pressure has increased all of a sudden, and such things. It can detect uh, these signals. Once these signals are detected, if you immediately raise an uh, ambulance alarm, then it is not nice because like, there can be several false alarms. So to reduce the false alarms, what the robot does is like, uh, uh, the robot actually comes to the patient, okay, and then like, it tries to stop a communication. So basically like, it asks certain questions, of course, is, these questions are uh, uh, asked based on some sort of intelligence built into the system. Okay, based on the answers to these questions, the robot can uh, detect whether it is a true alarm or a false alarm. If it really detects like it is a true alarm, and uh, the patient really needs an immediate help, it actually raises the alarm and then like uh, it tries to. Uh, uh, actually uh, raise an alarm to the doctors and then uh, ambulance and so and so. So whatever, uh, in whichever way like you would like to configure. So this is the system about. Uh, this is uh, the RoboMD project. So we have actually five partners. And uh, of course, we are from University of Tartu who have built the intelligence into the system. We have uh, partners from uh, Austria, uh, the, from the University of Lynch, John Kepler's University of Lynch. And then, like, uh, they are the ones uh, who are the lead participants for this project. And then they have the built the uh, sensors. And then, like, uh, the robot is from Fonsis, from the Netherlands team. And then, like, uh, the Sheska Budiovice, the Czech Republic team, has uh, built the network systems for this one. And then, like, we have a fifth partner uh, from uh, Italy uh, who have the domain expertise. Like, uh, they really know, like, uh, for which sort of alerts which sort of questions are reasonable. So it is a collaborative project with, uh, of all the teams. And uh, today we are here to demonstrate it for the first time to the world. Hopefully it works fine. Of course, still it is a prototype. And then like uh, still uh, it has to pass through significant tests and then so and so. So that's right. So we are actually simulating like he's an old man. And then like uh, he has some sensors attached to him. And then, like, uh, of course, we cannot stop his heart. Okay, so like, uh, nothing of that sort can be tested. But one thing which we can test it pretty easily is a fall simulation. So we will just uh, make him fall, and based on that one, the system should recognize it, and then like it should approach him and it should ask him some certain questions. Okay, so hopefully it works. Let's see it. Okay. Yeah. So everybody is in place, right? <laughs> yeah, the perfect demo effect. We don't get a signal. You don't get a signal. It wasn't a fall. This, this is not a fall, okay? So like, now it comes. Yeah, okay, so. Yeah, okay, so. Excuse me, have you fallen down? Yes. Yes. Do you need help? Yes. The health care center is notified. Wait a moment. Someone will be there shortly. Yeah, okay. So that, that's it. Actually, you must have heard like there is a slight beep here which is actually like simulating the third party system. So like this can be actually 
uh, joined with uh, some sort of ambulance or like uh, what if the patient cannot answer? Uh, we have timeout system. Uh, actually, like we have 30 sort of alert cases. So basically, like uh, this is the only thing which we can simulate here. Okay, so for a person to fall, it is easy, but rather to stop, it's hard. I don't know what to do. Probably, like we will be testing the system with the elderly patients in home care uh, environments. Uh, these experiments will be done in uh, uh, probably in uh, Netherlands or in Italy pretty soon, and then like. Uh, in that case, like we will be testing with almost all the 30 alert cases which we have designed for. Okay, so this is just one of the alert cases. And uh, uh, actually, like uh, based on this, uh, which sort of alert case, asking which sort of question, it is the intelligence which was built by University of Tartu. Okay, and then like uh, all the knowledge which it is gaining and gathering, and then like uh, how it takes a certain decision is based on the system that which we have built. Uh, actually, for the time being, like uh, we have accelerometer sensor, <laughs> and also, <laughs> uh, and uh, we also have uh, uh, sensors to catch uh, uh, blood pressure, and also like pulse rate and the skin temperature. Okay, of course, like uh, blood pressure level. No. Uh, blood pressure level. No. Do no. We no. Uh, at the moment, only the ECG is measured. The acceleration and the skin temperature. Yeah, exactly. So the, then the fourth one, we still have the end of the What are the uh, The thing is like uh, if the person has fever, say for example, like uh, we have uh, seen some cases where like uh, uh, the person has uh, fever for four days, okay? And then like uh, if he has omitted and there is a slight uh, uh, change in his pulse rate, then okay, so of course I, I can't uh, say with uh, some, what probability, but then like uh, some studies say like there is a slight probability like this person may get a heart attack mm -hmm. in certain time. Okay, so this is already a true alarm. If we can really detect it, then it's very good. What is the operating distance of this robot? So actually, like uh, as I said, like there are different technologies working here. Yeah. Okay, say for example, like the sensors are attached to Bluetooth, so which actually restricts yourself to 300 meters, but then like in best case, it is like 30 meters or 50 meters, which would be ideal case. Uh, but then like that is based on wireless, so okay, so it uh, really depends on the hotspot, whatever you are configuring and the how it is. So there are several uh, subsystems. One of them has, yeah. the machine uh, uh, to help uh, several patients at once. Exactly. So like uh, this, that's what I was saying. Like uh, somebody has asked the same question. So like, uh, uh, of course, probably sooner or later this question might pop up. Like let me already say it. So I will answer that question based on, uh, I will ask you a question. Uh, so can you really uh, come to a number like how much it costs? So the current system costs how much? Say for example, forget about the project development and everything. Say for example, whatever the equipment that is really necessary to have such a system. So can you uh, somehow predict the cost of the system? Currently, we put it something around... Uh, Thousand. How much? Thousand euros. Okay, so mm -hmm. that is too little. Uh, actually, like forget about the external systems and so and so, but just the robot plus the whatever the external components, it costs something around twenty thousand euros. So the robot itself is six thousand euros. It is already a cheap version. We all, all also have another version which is like uh, twelve thousand euros. Actually, like this is a research robot from the same company. So currently, the system costs twenty thousand. So then, like, uh, yeah, of course. Then we really have to decide, like, whether we want to put uh, such an expensive system for each individual person, or like, say, for example, two or three such robots monitoring one oldest home. So the second option is much better. Okay. So uh, we have built enough knowledge into the system, but uh, such thing have not been tested yet. Of course, it is not in the current scope of the current project, but sooner or later, like, we will be testing the system with such things. 
have students participated uh, in developing uh, this uh, system? Yeah, actually several students have participated uh, in this one. Uh, we have uh, Pele Jokovic, one of my PhD students, who is the main uh, contributor for uh, this project. And uh, there are also several other uh, students, master students and bachelor students, and then like uh, uh, another PhD student who uh, have also contributed significantly okay, uh, in the development of the system. There are many groups developing sensors like that uh, all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, as I understood, the main innov innovation of your project is this robot. Uh, you ask whether you, you need help or not. Yeah, so exactly. So the intelligence built into the knowledge, uh, into the robot is the actual, uh, rather like the innovative thing that is in the project, and it is from you. Yeah. Satish, what yeah. are the other critical situations that you can? Uh, actually, like I have a list of uh, 30 alert cases, which we have a different document. If anybody is interested, you can approach me. I can mail you those things. Say, for example, like uh, uh, regular blood pressure, regular temperature cases, and then like, uh, of course, there are several medical terms which I'm not expert. So like, basically, if anybody is interested, I can send you the alert questions. Of course, I have to talk to other partners also. But OK, I have given you a number, 20,000 euros. So what we are seeing, like, uh, uh, sooner or later, the company will also release commodity computers. The goal is like we should have such a system built for something like 5,000 euros. That is the goal which I am seeing in the long term. Uh, I have also another question, just uh, out of curiosity. So if you look at the robot, uh, do you sense anything interesting? He's sitting. Exactly. That is the point. So why he is sitting? Can you tell me? Um, first, the easier to move around. Mm? Exactly. And stepping and second, uh, the uh, weight center yeah, is exactly. lower than when he is upright. Yeah, exactly. So, like, uh, yeah, moving, uh, if uh, it is a humanoid, if it has to walk, it is very slow. So, then we are making it uh, sit on a podium, okay? And then, like, the podium moves a bit faster. Simple. But then, like, yet effective. I have seen uh, several football systems where the like the humanoid has to kick the football, but uh, in uh, trying to kick the football, like it like goes up and then like it falls down, and then it really loses some time to get up and so and so. So we are making it sit, so that is pretty safe for the robot and also uh, fast for us. Why must it be such human weight, such similar to human weight? Okay. The pure robotic guys should be answering this one, but then like humanoids, having a companion of uh, another person with you is always a different feel. Of course, like uh, uh, if you really look at all the other robotic systems that are successful, say for example, there are several uh, robots like dogs or cats or something from uh, Fujitsu and then Sony and then which are very famous in Japan. People have their own choices, but uh, we were here looking at a humanoid sort of uh, a human companion, replacing a direct human companion. Actually, like, uh, we have asked the same question uh, to some of the elderly patients. So, yeah, for example, like, if she is sleeping, an old lady, all of a sudden, like, uh, there is a slight sound. It has uh, sent some signals. And then, like, the cat approaches to the lady and then asks like have you uh, uh, is your heart beating properly so then uh, uh, we have uh, already got the answers like the she makes a loud noise and then takes her stick and then like already starts hitting the cat so okay we want to avoid such situations so Uh, the person is pointing in, uh, in the other room, can it find a way to the other Actually, like, uh, this is the next phase of the project, which uh, uh, actually in two months, like, if this will be delivered. We already have a preliminary system, but then, like, uh, there are some projects, uh, problems associated with this one. Say, for example, like, uh, the sensors attached to the robot are to the back side. So if we try with this one, with the automated uh, routing system, so it actually goes back which will not be logically all right, but then like that is the robot uh, has been built like that. 
so like uh, until it goes into the production system so we can't really check these uh, small things but then like uh, anyhow like uh, automatic routing of the robot to the patient and finding the object and then like clearing the obstacles it's also involved with the project probably in two months like we will try to solve this one of course uh, the uh, team from netherlands will try to solve it Actually, I don't have enough knowledge of these things. So, like, uh, in time, like, we may have to observe, or, like, uh, I don't know, like, how the knowledge is built into the system. We already have enough sensors to recognize, say, for example, like, uh, uh, there is also a camera attached to it. Already we have some software which we have tested which can also recognize human faces. So, face recognition software also we have. So, some of the cloud services which we have checked for other applications, probably we may build into it. But uh, these things are the extensions for it. Say, for example, for the time being, like it will be a plain, obstacle-free uh, thing which we have demonstrated today. Probably in two months, like we may be able to demonstrate the company system where it also crosses some obstacles. Okay, so I'll, I'll start this one now. Yeah. Okay. So like. Uh, bye bye.